Welcome to Starbound, where every star tells a story. What happens when humans begin relations with aliens, and then we decide to introduce them to our dogs? Let's get into the story. Ambassador Amara, a being of bioluminescent grace from the planet Cerulean, descended from her starship onto the bustling landing pad. Her cerulean skin, usually aglow with the soft luminescence of her home planet, flickered with a disquietude that ran deeper than the unfamiliar gravity. Earth, the vibrant blue and green planet she'd only seen in star charts, now assaulted her senses with a cacophony of sounds and a swirling mass of humanity. This was a historic moment, the first human cerulean summit intended to forge diplomatic ties between their vastly different civilizations. Yet, as she disembarked, a tremor of fear went through her bioluminescent form. It wasn't the sleek metallic architecture of the landing pad or the advanced technology glimpsed through the docking bay window. Earth's advancements were impressive, but not beyond Cerulean's capabilities. It was something else entirely. A guttural growl, low and menacing, pierced the air. Amara's bioluminescence flickered wildly, betraying the sudden surge of terror. Through the docking bay window, she saw it. A hulking black beast with teeth bared in a snarl, held in check by a human leash. Its imposing form, the epitome of a creature from Cerulean's darkest legends, sent shivers down her spine. A human in a crisp black uniform approached, his demeanor calm amidst the airport chaos. His name tag read, Captain Miller. Welcome, Ambassador Amara, he greeted, his voice a soothing counterpoint to the cacophony around them. Amara threw the bio-translator implanted in her ear, managed a smile that felt strained, even to her own senses. Greetings, Captain Miller, she replied, her voice barely above a whisper. This is a fascinating arrival platform. Miller chuckled, a sound that seemed out of place in the tense atmosphere. We call it the airport, he explained, gesturing towards the security guard and the snarling beast. And that, Ambassador, is a Rottweiler, a working dog. Amara recoiled, her bioluminescence flickering like a dying ember. The image before her defied comprehension. How could such a creature, a living embodiment of the night terrors that haunted Cerulean folklore, nocturnal predators of pure muscle and bone leaving trails of devastation in their wake, be a working dog? Fear threatened to consume her, but she forced it down. This was a diplomatic mission, and fear was a luxury she couldn't afford. Night terror, she gasped in her native tongue, the bio-translator relaying the word as beast for the humans. Miller's brow furrowed in confusion. Beast? It's just a security dog ambassador. Highly trained, very friendly, he assured her, his voice holding a hint of amusement. Amara struggled to reconcile the human's words with the snarling beast before her. In Cerulean culture, animals were either prey or predator. There was no concept of companionship. The very notion of a creature so closely resembling a night terror being a partner to a human seemed absurd. Yet here it was, a living paradox that threatened to unravel her preconceived notions. The journey to the summit was a sensory assault for Amara. Towering skyscrapers like obsidian teeth pierced the sky, casting long shadows over a sea of bustling humanity. Vehicles of all shapes and sizes hummed and sputtered, their colorful paint jobs a stark contrast to the muted tones of Cerulean. Billboards, ablaze with vibrant advertisements that flickered and pulsed, bombarded her bioluminescence accustomed to the soft, natural glow emanating from beneath the surface of her homeworld. Captain Miller, his voice a soothing counterpoint to the urban symphony, noticed Amara's overwhelmed expression. Quite something, isn't it, Ambassador? He commented with a hint of amusement. We humans tend to be a bit loud. Amara attempted a smile, the unfamiliar sensation stretching across her bioluminescent features. Quite vibrant, she managed, her voice barely audible amidst the cacophony. Unlike Cerulean, where the light comes from beneath the surface, illuminating the bioluminescent flora that bathes everything in a gentle glow. Her guide, Dr. Maya Sharma, a young woman with eyes as warm as the brown earth and a smile as gentle as the caress of twilight on Cerulean, joined the conversation. We have a diverse range of environments, she explained, gesturing towards a sprawling green park that unfolded before them, a haven of tranquility amidst the urban sprawl. Animals of all shapes and sizes play a vital role in our world's ecosystems, from the majestic predators that stalk the savannas to the tiny insects that pollinate our flowers. 
Amara directed her gaze towards the park, where a playful golden retriever, its fur the color of the midday sun on Cerulean, bounded across the manicured lawn in joyful pursuit of a crimson frisbee. Unlike the snarling Rottweiler at the landing pad, this canine exuded an almost childlike joy in its movements. Yet, the unease lingered. Animals on Cerulean were categorized simply prey or predator. There was no concept of companionship, no bond between human and beast. This display of playful interaction defied her understanding, sparking a flicker of curiosity amidst the fear. The summit itself was a whirlwind of diplomatic formalities. Amara, despite her initial trepidation regarding the night terrors, managed to maintain a composed demeanor. Her bioluminescence, though still flickering faintly at times betraying her underlying disquiet, had settled into a more stable rhythm. Ambassador Thompson, a seasoned human diplomat with a kind smile and eyes that crinkled at the corners when he spoke, led the discussions. He presented Earth's history, its triumphs and struggles, with a captivating eloquence. Amara, in turn, spoke of Cerulean, a world bathed in bioluminescent light, where harmony with nature was paramount, and the delicate balance between predator and prey was revered. However, during a cultural exchange presentation showcasing Earth's diverse law enforcement methods, a video depicting a police dog apprehending a fleeing criminal sent a jolt of fear through her. The powerful canine, a German shepherd in this instance, its muscles taut with focused energy and teeth bared in a snarl, mirrored the cerulean night terrors in a disconcerting way. Memories of the snarling Rottweiler at the landing pad resurfaced, and her bioluminescence flickered wildly, momentarily drowning out the rest of the presentation and causing a stir amongst the assembled delegates. Ambassador Thompson, noticing her distress with a practiced eye honed from years of navigating international diplomacy, paused the video. Is everything all right, Ambassador Amara? He inquired with genuine concern, his voice a soothing counterpoint to the sudden tension in the room. Amara struggled to find her voice, the image of the snarling canine still vivid in her mind, its ferocity a stark contrast to the peaceful coexistence between humans and bioluminescent flora that defines cerulean life. The, the canines, she stammered, her voice barely above a whisper. They seem so aggressive. Thompson smiled kindly, his eyes conveying understanding. Ah, working dogs, he explained, dispelling the tension with a lighthearted chuckle. They're trained for specific tasks, some of which require a show of force, much like our security personnel. With a gentle press of a button, he switched the video to a different scene seemingly anticipating her reaction. It portrayed a heartwarming interaction, a therapy dog, a fluffy white Samoyed with eyes as gentle as twilight on Cerulean, nuzzled a young child in a hospital bed. The child, pale and gaunt, offered a weak smile in response, a flicker of hope blooming in their eyes as they reached out a hand to stroke the dog's fur. Amara watched, mesmerized. The gentle way the dog nuzzled the child, the silent comfort it offered without judgment, filled her with an unfamiliar warmth. Could creatures so closely related to the night terrors of Cerulean folklore, creatures that inspired fear and nightmares, be capable of such empathy? The question hung heavy in the air, a challenge to everything she thought she knew about these fascinating yet unsettling animals. This unexpected revelation sparked a flicker of curiosity within her, a tiny flame battling against the ingrained fear. It was a seed planted, waiting to see if it could take root in the fertile soil of her newfound experiences on Earth. The summit concluded with a sense of cautious optimism. Cultural differences were acknowledged, and the foundation for future collaboration was laid. As the official ceremonies came to a close, Amara found herself lingering behind, her bioluminescence pulsing with a mix of apprehension and a newfound curiosity. Dr. Sharma, ever observant, approached her. Is everything all right, Ambassador? she asked with a gentle concern that cut through the lingering tension of the day. Amara hesitated for a moment, then took a deep breath, the bioluminescence on her skin flickering with the effort. The presentation, she began, her voice barely above a whisper. The canines used for law enforcement. They reminded me of our night terrors. Dr. Sharma nodded in understanding, her warm brown eyes reflecting Amara's disquiet. Yes, I can see the resemblance. But working dogs on Earth serve a different purpose. They're trained partners, not wild predators. Partners? 
Amara echoed, the concept still foreign to her. In Cerulean culture, the relationship between humans and animals was one of dominance and fear. The idea of a mutualistic bond between a human and a creature so closely resembling the monstrous night terrors was difficult to grasp. Exactly, Dr. Sharma explained, her enthusiasm evident despite the seriousness of the topic. Many breeds have been bred over centuries to work alongside humans, herding livestock, assisting people with disabilities, even saving lives in search and rescue operations. The image of the therapy dog from the presentation flickered through Amara's mind. Its gentle touch, so different from the snarling canines she'd witnessed, had sparked a flicker of curiosity amidst the fear. Saving lives? She repeated, a note of genuine interest creeping into her voice. Absolutely, Dr. Sharma continued, her voice brimming with a passion for these creatures. Would you like to see firsthand how these canine companions work? Amara considered for a moment. The fear of night terrors was still ingrained in her, a primal instinct passed down through generations, but the curiosity sparked by the therapy dog video was growing stronger, fueled by a desire to understand this fundamental difference between Cerulean and Earth. Finally, she made a decision. Yes, she said, her voice betraying a hint of trepidation. I would. The next day, Dr. Sharma took Amara to a local animal shelter. The air buzzed with a cacophony of sounds, a symphony of barks, whines, and meows that was both chaotic and strangely comforting. Rows of kennels housed a menagerie of abandoned dogs, a testament to the complexities of the human-animal bond on Earth. Some, with matted fur and forlorn eyes, whimpered in their cages. Others, more lively, barked excitedly at the sight of visitors. Amara's bioluminescence flickered nervously as she approached a kennel housing a small chihuahua, no bigger than her foot. The tiny creature, with fur the color of burnt sienna and eyes that blazed with defiance, launched into a fierce tirade of barks, its diminutive frame trembling with apparent rage. The initial jolt of fear was a familiar echo of the night terrors, but Amara pushed it down, determined to see beyond her ingrained assumptions. Dr. Sharma chuckled softly, a sound that calmed the storm brewing within Amara. Don't let his size fool you, Ambassador she said, kneeling down to offer the dog a gentle hand. This little guy is all bark and no bite. Hesitantly, Amara reached out a hand towards the kennel. The chihuahua, momentarily stunned into silence, watched her with wary curiosity. Slowly, tentatively, Amara extended a finger towards the small creature. To her surprise, the chihuahua didn't snap or snarl. Instead, it cautiously sniffed her finger, its earlier bravado replaced by a cautious exploration. Amara felt a wave of warmth wash over her, a mix of relief and wonder. This tiny creature, despite its initial display of aggression, wasn't a monster. It was an individual, a being reacting to its environment just like any other living thing. Dr. Sharma smiled encouragingly. See, Ambassador? Not all dogs are like night terrors, she said. These animals come in all shapes, sizes, and personalities. Some are bred for specific tasks, but many simply yearn for companionship and love. Amara pondered Dr. Sharma's words, her bioluminescent glow slowly pulsing with a newfound rhythm. Perhaps, she thought, the relationship between humans and animals on Earth wasn't so different from the symbiotic relationships that existed on Cerulean. Maybe, just maybe, there was more to learn about these fascinating creatures than she initially thought. The animal shelter visit had left Amara with a swirling vortex of emotions. The initial primal fear of night terrors still lurked in the back of her mind, a legacy of generations of fear passed down through Cerulean folklore. But this fear was now challenged by a burgeoning curiosity, a spark ignited by witnessing the diverse personalities of the dogs. The fierce chihuahua's initial bravado that quickly melted into cautious exploration the playful golden retrievers bounding with unbridled joy in the shelter yard, all of it chipped away at her preconceived notions about these creatures. The next day's visit to the search and rescue training ground further solidified this shift within her. Gone were the bustling streets and abandoned animals of the shelter. Here, a sense of focused purpose and unwavering dedication hung heavy in the air. A group of handlers and their canine partners awaited their arrival. Each handler stood with a quiet pride beside their dog German shepherds, Labradors, and even a border collie, their eyes gleaming with an intelligence that transcended mere animal instinct. 
Amara's bioluminescence flickered with a mix of apprehension and fascination as she surveyed the scene. It was a stark contrast to the snarling beast that haunted her nightmares, a testament to the incredible diversity of the canine species. The demonstration began with a simulated earthquake scenario. A large, enclosed structure resembling a collapsed building dominated the training field. One of the handlers, a woman with a determined jawline and a gentle smile that crinkled at the corners of her eyes, stepped forward to explain the exercise. Her voice, strong and clear, held a note of pride as she spoke. Our dogs are trained to locate survivors trapped beneath debris, she said. Their sense of smell allows them to detect human scent through layers of concrete and rubble, making them invaluable assets in rescue operations. With a sharp whistle that cut through the air, the demonstration commenced. The handler and her German shepherd, a powerful dog with a coat the color of polished ebony, approached the simulated wreckage. The dog, its nose twitching intently, began a focused search, weaving through the debris with a practiced efficiency that spoke volumes about the countless hours spent training. Amara watched, captivated, as the dog, guided by its keen sense of smell, pinpointed a location within the debris. The handler, acting on the dog's cues, carefully navigated the simulated rubble, eventually locating a hidden dummy representing a trapped survivor. The dog barked excitedly, signaling their success, the sound echoing across the training field. A wave of awe washed over Amara. This wasn't just a display of training. It was a testament to the incredible bond between human and canine. The intelligence, the focus, the unwavering loyalty displayed by the dog, it was a sight that defied her expectations. These weren't mindless beasts like the night terrors of Cerulean lore. They were partners, heroes even, saving lives in situations too dangerous for humans alone. As the other teams completed their demonstrations, showcasing the diverse skills of search and rescue dogs, from tracking lost people in the wilderness to sniffing out explosives, Amara felt a transformation within herself. The fear, though not entirely eradicated, was overshadowed by a newfound respect for these remarkable creatures. It was a grudging respect at first, a hesitant acknowledgement of their intelligence and capabilities. But it was a start, a crack in the wall of fear that had separated her from understanding these fascinating beings. Later, as they returned to the city, the cityscape blurring into a kaleidoscope of lights as they sped through the evening traffic, Dr. Sharma inquired about Amara's experience. It was... fascinating, Amara admitted, her voice softer than usual, a stark contrast to the composed demeanor she'd maintained throughout the summit. Dr. Sharma smiled warmly, her eyes reflecting the city lights dancing outside the window. The human-animal bond is a complex thing, Ambassador, she said. It's a tapestry woven from trust, respect, and a shared understanding. These dogs are more than just pets. They're family, partners, even heroes. They offer us companionship, loyalty, and sometimes even save our lives. Amara pondered Dr. Sharma's words, the weight of them settling in her mind. Perhaps she thought there was something Cerulean could learn from Earth's approach to its animal companions. Maybe, just maybe, a similar understanding of the creatures that shared their world could benefit her own people. The concept was foreign, a radical departure from the established hierarchy on Cerulean, but the seeds of curiosity, planted during her visit to the animal shelter and nurtured by the awe-inspiring display of the search and rescue dogs, had taken root. The question now was, would they blossom into a new understanding, or would the fear ingrained in Cerulean culture continue to cast a long shadow? The search and rescue demonstration left a profound impact on Amara. The raw courage and unwavering loyalty displayed by the canine companions shattered her perception of these creatures. The fear, though still present, was now entangled with a burgeoning respect. Back in her temporary quarters at the human embassy, Amara found herself restless. The bioluminescent glow emanating from her skin flickered with an internal conflict. She paced the plush room, alien furniture and advanced technology, a stark contrast to the natural bioluminescent caves of Cerulean. Sleep was a distant prospect. Her mind kept replaying the scenes from the training ground, the focused determination of the German shepherd, the excited barking signaling a successful rescue, the bond evident between the handler and her canine partner. It was a stark contrast to the predator-prey dynamic that defined the relationship between cerulean life forms. As dawn painted the cityscape in hues of rose and gold, Amara reached a decision. 
She needed to see more to delve deeper into this fascinating concept of human-animal companionship. Dr. Sharma, ever observant, sensed her dilemma. Is something troubling you, Ambassador? She asked with a gentle concern. Amara hesitated, the ingrained fear of appearing vulnerable battling with the burgeoning curiosity. Finally, she confessed, the canines, they continue to baffle me, this bond you share. She trailed off, searching for the right words. The human-animal bond? Dr. Sharma finished the sentence with a knowing smile. It's something that can't be fully explained, Ambassador. It's a feeling, a connection that transcends language. But perhaps experiencing it firsthand will give you a better understanding. Amara felt a flicker of hope, maybe observing human interaction with these creatures in a more personal setting, away from the controlled environment of the training ground, would provide a clearer picture. Later that day, Dr. Sharma took Amara to a bustling park. The scene unfolded before her like a tableau of human-canine interaction. Children shrieked with laughter as they chased frisbees alongside playful golden retrievers. A young woman sat on a bench, her arm wrapped around a fluffy white samoyed, her face etched with a tranquil contentment. Even a grumpy-looking old man, his gait stiff with age, couldn't hide the fondness in his eyes as his beagle eagerly sniffed every lamppost. Amara watched, mesmerized. Here, amidst the everyday life of humans, the bond was on full display. It wasn't just about work or survival, but about companionship, comfort, and a silent understanding that transcended words. The park was a microcosm of the human-animal connection, a tapestry woven from countless threads of loyalty, affection, and mutual dependence. As they walked through the park, a young boy approached, his face beaming with a childish enthusiasm. A small beagle, its fur the color of dark chocolate, frolicked at his heels. The boy, no older than ten, stopped in front of Amara, his eyes wide with curiosity. Hi, he greeted shyly, his voice barely above a whisper. My name is Ben, and this is Coco. The beagle, as if on cue, barked excitedly and wagged its tail furiously. Amara, surprised by the unexpected interaction, hesitated for a moment. Then, with Dr. Sharma's encouraging smile urging her forward, she reached out a tentative hand towards the dog. Coco, unlike the initial apprehension of the Chihuahua at the shelter, eagerly sniffed her fingers. Amara felt a jolt of surprise as the dog's soft fur brushed against her skin. It wasn't the monstrous night terror of her nightmares, but a playful creature seeking affection. Ben, sensing her surprise, giggled. Don't worry, Ambassador, he said, his voice bubbling with childish innocence. Coco's all bark and no bite. She just likes to meet new people. Amara, a hesitant smile gracing her bioluminescent features, knelt down to Coco's level. The dog, sensing her gentle touch, nudged her hand with its wet nose. In that simple gesture, a connection formed, a bridge between two vastly different worlds built on a shared understanding, the unconditional love and loyalty of a canine companion. This encounter, brief as it was, left a profound mark on Amara. It was a tangible reminder that the human-animal bond wasn't some abstract concept but a lived experience, a connection forged through shared moments and mutual affection. It was a seed planted in the fertile soil of her curiosity, a seed that held the potential to blossom into a new understanding between Cerulean and the creatures that shared their world. The encounter with Ben and Coco left a warm ember glowing within Amara. It wasn't a complete eradication of her fear, but a softening, a willingness to consider a different perspective. Back at the embassy, she sought out Dr. Sharma, her bioluminescence pulsing with a newfound purpose. Dr. Sharma, Amara began, her voice betraying a hint of nervousness. I'd like to learn more about the history of human-animal companionship. Dr. Sharma's eyes lit up with genuine enthusiasm. An excellent request, Ambassador, she exclaimed. The bond between humans and canines stretches back millennia. Archaeological evidence suggests early humans and wolves formed a symbiotic relationship, eventually evolving into the domesticated dogs we know today. Over the next few days, Dr. Sharma became Amara's guide through the fascinating history of human-animal interaction. They delved into ancient cave paintings depicting humans hunting alongside canines, explored the role of dogs in herding and guarding livestock, and even delved into the cultural significance of dogs in various human societies. 
Amara learned about the Inuit people and their reliance on sled dogs for transportation across the harsh Arctic landscape. She discovered the ancient Egyptians who revered dogs as companions and protectors, even mummifying them alongside their human counterparts. She was particularly intrigued by the story of St. Bernard rescue dogs in the Swiss Alps, their bravery and sense of smell saving countless lives from avalanches. With each story, Amara's perception of canines shifted. They weren't just fearsome predators or working partners. They were companions who had played a vital role in human history, evolving alongside humans in a dance of mutual dependence and respect. One evening, as they relaxed in the embassy gardens, bathed in the soft glow of Earth's twilight, Amara confessed a hidden desire. Dr. Sharma, she began, her voice barely a whisper. Would it be possible for me to interact with a therapy dog? Dr. Sharma's smile was as warm as the twilight sky. Of course, Ambassador, she replied. I know just the place. The next day, they visited a local children's hospital. The sterile environment was filled with a quiet tension, punctuated by the occasional whimper or sob. But when Amara and Dr. Sharma entered the playroom with a golden retriever named Buddy by their side, the atmosphere shifted. Buddy, a gentle giant with fur the color of sunlit wheat, exuded a calming presence. He ambled through the room, his tail wagging like a metronome set to the rhythm of joy. A young girl, confined to a wheelchair, reached out a tentative hand, her face etched with sadness. Buddy, sensing her need, nudged her hand with his wet nose his golden eyes reflecting a quiet understanding. A flicker of a smile, fragile but genuine, broke through the girl's sadness. As Amara watched the interaction unfold, a lump formed in her throat. This wasn't just about companionship. It was about empathy, a silent connection that offered comfort in a time of need. Later, as they left the hospital, Amara's bioluminescence glowed with a newfound intensity. The fear, a legacy of generations of cerulean folklore, was not entirely gone. It lingered in the back of her mind, a faint echo but overshadowed by a sense of awe and respect. These canine companions, once seen as monstrous night terrors, were capable of immense compassion and loyalty. Thank you, Dr. Sharma, Amara said, her voice filled with a newfound warmth. These experiences have shown me a different side of canines. Perhaps, on Cerulean, we can learn to appreciate the creatures that share our world in a new light. Dr. Sharma smiled, her eyes twinkling with hope. The potential for understanding is limitless, Ambassador, she replied. And who knows, maybe one day Cerulean will have its own team of canine companions, heroes just like the ones you've seen here on Earth. The future remained uncertain, but a seed of hope had been planted. As Amara prepared for her departure from Earth, she carried with her not just the memories of diplomatic agreements, but a newfound appreciation for the remarkable creatures known as dogs. They were a testament to the power of companionship, a bridge between different worlds built on trust, loyalty, and a silent understanding that transcended language. This newfound appreciation extended beyond the practical applications Amara had witnessed. The search and rescue dogs, the therapy dogs, they were all impressive demonstrations of the human-canine bond but it was the simple act of a child's laughter echoing alongside a dog's playful bark in the park, the quiet comfort offered by a furry companion at a hospital bedside. These everyday moments held a profound beauty that resonated with Amara on a deeper level. Perhaps, she thought, Cerulean could learn from this. Maybe the harmonious coexistence between bioluminescent flora and fauna that define their world could be enriched by a new understanding. Back on her home planet, Amara knew the road wouldn't be easy. The ingrained fear of the night terrors ran deep, a cultural narrative passed down through generations. But the experiences on Earth had ignited a spark within her, a flicker of curiosity that wouldn't be easily extinguished. Her first step, she decided, would be to share her experiences with the Cerulean Council. The vivid descriptions of search and rescue dogs saving lives, the heartwarming interaction with the therapy dog at the children's hospital, these anecdotes she hoped would chip away at the wall of fear. However, she knew words alone wouldn't suffice. The council needed tangible evidence. So she proposed a pilot program. A small group of specially trained Cerulean scientists venturing to Earth to study canine behavior firsthand. They wouldn't be handlers. The cultural barriers were too vast for that. But through observation and documentation, 
they could gather data, learn about the unique bond between humans and dogs, and hopefully translate that knowledge into a new framework for Cerulean. The proposal was met with a mix of skepticism and cautious optimism. Some council members scoffed at the idea, clinging to the traditional narratives of predator and prey, yet others, intrigued by Amara's passionate arguments and the potential benefits, lent their support. After a heated debate, a compromise was reached. The pilot program was approved, albeit with limitations. The team would be small, their observations strictly controlled. But for Amara, it was a start, a crack in the monolithic belief system. This first step, however tentative, held the potential to usher in a new era of understanding on Cerulean. The seeds of change were sown. As Amara stood on the landing platform, bidding farewell to Dr. Sharma and the human world, her bioluminescence pulsed with a newfound purpose. The fear of night terror still flickered in the shadows, but it was now challenged by a burgeoning hope. The journey back to Cerulean wouldn't just be a physical voyage, it would be a journey of cultural transformation, a bridge forged between two worlds through the unlikely bond between humans and their canine companions. The future remained uncertain, but Amara carrying the ember of newfound understanding was ready to face the challenges ahead. The legacy of the night terrors might linger, but perhaps just perhaps a new narrative one of respect and coexistence could begin to take root. The journey back to Cerulean was a blur of stars and swirling nebulae. Amara, despite the physical comforts of her bioluminescent cabin, found herself restless. The weight of her experiences on Earth pressed heavily on her. Sharing them with the Council was one thing, but convincing them to embrace a radical new perspective regarding creatures viewed as monstrous for generations was another. However, amidst the trepidation, a flicker of hope persisted. The memories of Dr. Sharma's unwavering support, the awe-inspiring search and rescue dogs, and the quiet comfort offered by the therapy dog fueled her determination. She spent the journey crafting a presentation, weaving together data from her observations with captivating visuals and personal anecdotes. It wouldn't be easy, but she was determined to portray the true nature of these remarkable creatures. Upon returning to Cerulean, Amara delved into preparations for the council meeting. Selecting the team for the pilot program proved crucial. She needed scientists with open minds, a thirst for knowledge, and most importantly, a willingness to challenge established beliefs. After careful consideration, she assembled a diverse group, a mix of veteran researchers and young enthusiastic biologists. The day of the council meeting arrived, and the tension in the chamber crackled like bioluminescent lightning. Amara, her bioluminescence, a beacon of unwavering conviction, addressed the assembled dignitaries. Her voice, amplified by the translator device, resonated through the chamber. She began by acknowledging the cultural significance of the night terrors, their presence etched in Cerulean folklore for millennia. However, she argued, these stories were born from a primal fear, a limited understanding of the creatures they depicted. Then, with the grace of a dancer and the clarity of a scholar, Amara unveiled her presentation. Images of search and rescue dogs braving treacherous terrain to locate survivors, of therapy dogs offering solace to the sick and lonely, filled the chamber. Videos showcased the playful antics of puppies and the unwavering loyalty of working canines. As the presentation concluded, a heavy silence descended upon the chamber. The council members for the first time were forced to confront the reality of Earth's canines, a far cry from the ferocious beasts of their nightmares. The debate that followed was fierce. Traditionalists clinging to the established narrative argued against any form of connection with such creatures, but the tide was shifting. Amara's team, armed with their research and inspired by their leader's passion, presented a compelling case. They spoke of the complex social structures of canines, their capacity for empathy, and the potential benefits of studying their unique bond with humans. Slowly, the perception of these creatures began to shift. Curiosity, a spark ignited by Amara's experiences, flickered within the council chambers. Finally, after a lengthy deliberation, a decision was reached. The pilot program was approved, not without restrictions, but with enough resources and flexibility to hold promise. Amara's team, brimming with excitement and a touch of fear, would travel to Earth. As they stood on the launch pad, bathed in the soft glow of Cerulean's two moons, Amara felt a surge of emotions. This wasn't just the beginning of a scientific expedition. It was a voyage of cultural discovery. 
The potential consequences, both positive and negative, were immense. Yet she knew the risk was worth taking. They carried the hope for a future where Cerulean's bioluminescent landscape could be shared not just with fearsome predators, but with loyal companions, fostering a new era of understanding. The journey had just begun, and the outcome remained uncertain, but one thing was clear. The legacy of the Night Terrors might forever be challenged by the burgeoning bond between humans and their canine companions.